I'm going to explain to you what the product rule for counting is. It's a really simple technique that we use to figure out how many different possibilities there are for something happening. So let's have a look at the product rule for counting. Now, looking at this, we can see that it's talking about product straight away. And so we know that it's going to involve multiplying numbers at some point. That's how we get a product. So let's take a look at this question I have here. A restaurant menu offers four starters, seven main courses and three different desserts. How many different three course meals can be selected from the menu? So let's try and get this information down somehow. Let's say we have our starters in one column, our main courses in the second, and our desserts in the last. So how many different possibilities do I have for my starter? Well, that is going to be four. I can pick from four different dishes for my starter. That makes sense, hopefully, to all of you. And then moving on to my main course, well, after picking my starter, I again have seven choices now for main courses. And now for desserts, how many possibilities? Three. What I do with these numbers is I multiply them together in order to figure out the total number of combinations. So let's do this very quickly. 21 times 4, that would give me 84 different combinations. Let's write that down. Hopefully that makes sense. I had four choices, then seven choices, then three choices. So I multiply the three numbers together in order to get the total number of different combinations. There we go. Okay, let's move on to a second question then. So now it's asking me here about a five digit odd number. So let's see, we can number our digits. And so the only digit that we have some information about to begin with is the last digit. And where's that found here? Odd numbers. What does that tell me about this last digit? Well, given these five digits, the last one must either be one or five in order for this five digit number to be odd. So we say that there are two different possibilities for this last digit, and those possibilities are right in brackets underneath, are one or five. Hopefully that makes sense. And now it wants no repetition of any digit. So let's say we've chosen a digit here, and we've chosen one. What could this fourth digit be? Well, I could have five, four, six, or eight. I have four different possibilities here. And if I've chosen five for this, how many possibilities do I have for the third one? I'll have three. I have three numbers left to choose from, as I can't have any repetition. So let's have three possibilities there. And you might have guessed where this is going. I'll have six and eight left for here. And I'll have eight left for here. And does it matter which digit we choose, which number we choose to go in this fourth digit? Well, no, because if I'd chosen four there, I'd have still had three numbers left and they could go in there. So let's multiply these numbers together. And that should tell us the different possibilities for this five digit number. So hopefully you can start to see how we came about to getting the answer of 48. What I do in each position is I think about the number of possibilities. So here it could be one or five. Here, if I want no repetition, I will have four numbers left. So I have four numbers to choose from. I have four different possibilities and so on. And that is the way to think about these questions. So moving on to one final question. This one's going to be a little bit different. Let's have a go with the techniques that we have already acquired. <clears throat> so 
these two men are going to be picked for the duet. So there's going to be the first and the second guy. And it's asking how many different pairs can be picked. Well, let's see. This first guy could be any of the 10 people in the choir. So that's 10 different possibilities. But obviously the second guy picked isn't going to be the same as the first guy. So I'm picking from a group of nine, not a group of 10. So you might say, okay, let's multiply these numbers together. That should give us 90 pairs. But let's think about this. If the first person is called, let's say, Pete, and the second person is called Matt, then if I had picked Matt first and then picked Pete, these two pairs are in effect the same pair. So I'm running the risk of duplicating inside of these pairs. So the way to solve this is very simple. As you can see, by using this method of multiplying the numbers together, what I get is exactly double the number of different pairs. I'm ending up with 90 pairs, but they're not all different. So let's divide this 90 by two. And that should give us the number of different pairs. It's 45. 